every day, installing the circuitry, every day conditioning the body into the emotion of the future, that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now, this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. Now it begins to come to you. You become the vortex or the magnet to your destiny. So then people who come out of their meditation and they say, well, I just focused on my wealth. Why isn't it there? Well, you're not that good. If you're asking why isn't it there, you're back to the old person again. Stay in that state for an extended period of time as an experiment, as the scientist in your life to keep your energy connected to the to the dream of your future and then see what kind of effects begin to take place without moving into impatience, mm. without moving into frustration, without starting to analyze why it hasn't happened or when that is the trap of defining reality with your senses. So you have the thought of your future and you don't see it, then you experience separation. But people who are practicing this work, they have the thought of their future and they feel the emotion of their future. They're still connected to it, right? Mm -hmm. So that takes practice. And it's just learning, like hitting a golf ball, hitting a tennis ball, dancing the salsa, you know, crocheting, whatever it is. You got you to gotta start out staying real conscious and learning. Then you get good at it and it gets to be instrumental. It gets to be fun. And that's, that's what I want for everybody, that the, the act of creation... Mm. should be a blissful, Playful. ecstatic, loose, uh, free process. Mm. And, um, and so I love the idea of people taking time out of their lives uh, to prove to themselves that if they're defined by the vision of the future, then they're not living by the memories of the past. And that's where the unknown exists. So many people, the unknown is a scary place. So they don't see that future because they're used to seeing that future with evidence, with their senses. And the, you have to be able to get beyond that and stay in the unknown, stay in that discomfort. And then in that moment, to be, begin to self-regulate. Like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little anxiety. Ooh, I'm starting to feel a little frustration. That's the defining moment where your body's going back to the past because emotions are a record of the past. Or you go into routine again. So you catch yourself. It's a victory. And if you keep catching yourself, those victories add up. Did you ever notice that people who get most of their life aren't trying so hard or stressing about their manifestation? They have confidence in themselves and the ability of the universe to bring their wishes into life. Think about all the stuff you plan to do to reach your big goals. Write down the choices you were going to make, the experiences you wanted, and how happy you'd feel. This helps you aim for your dreams. Then, here's the cool part. Write down the things you won't do. Recognize the behaviors you want to avoid, the experiences you want to steer clear of, and the feelings that bring you down. By doing this, you're separating your old habits from the new you. When you do this, you're not just going through the motions anymore. You're observing your actions from a higher perspective. This shift in perspective helps you see yourself more clearly. Let's say you've had some really tough times in the past that made you feel sad, worthless, and guilty. You got so used to feeling this way that it became normal for you. Maybe you even started blaming others and making excuses for yourself. But one day, you decide enough is enough. You realize that's not who you want to be anymore. You start your day with good intentions, but as soon as you realize you're not falling back into your old habits, it feels strange and uncomfortable. That discomfort is a sign that you're on the right track, moving towards a better version of yourself. We call this stepping into the river of change. Another important thing is finding balance. You have the power to tap into a deep well of wisdom called the unified field. This helps you create harmony in your body and mind. Instead of just focusing on material things all day, think about the bigger picture. Pay attention to this invisible field of knowledge beyond what you can see and touch. When you start noticing it, it becomes real to you. By focusing on it, you're putting your energy into something that can help you grow. 
And we've seen from studying thousands of brain scans that you're at your best when you go beyond your usual limits. When you stop thinking about your body, your identity tied to people and things, and all the places and time you're connected to, you enter a state of pure awareness. This is when you tap into something called the unified field or the quantum field. It's like an invisible source of endless possibilities beyond what we see and feel in our everyday lives. This field doesn't care about your race, gender, or job. It's open to everyone. This course isn't about waiting for a crisis to change your life. It's about realizing that you're the one in control and using tools to shape your future. For instance, there was a student who wanted to prove to herself that she could become more abundant. It wasn't just about money. It was about who she was becoming. Every day, she pushed past negative thoughts and habits like feeling unworthy or afraid to spend. One day, after a meditation where she felt connected to this field, she went to pay for parking and money started pouring out of the machine. Instead of just being happy about the money, she saw it as proof of her power to create. She left the money for others and felt empowered to create even more. This kind of experience isn't just for one person. It's something many people can achieve. The course teaches you to connect with this field and go beyond your limits. It's about finding inner balance and creating a new path for yourself. Another important rule is to focus on your future dreams. The energy you put out into the world affects what comes back to you. If you're stuck in negative feelings and thoughts, that's what you'll attract. But if you can envision a positive future and really feel it, you'll start to draw that reality closer to you. It's like changing the channel on your energy. When you get caught up in old patterns like getting angry in traffic, you're disconnecting from that positive energy. Instead of feeling like you're fighting against the world, you can learn to flow with it and attract what you want. Once you're able to keep up that new way of thinking and being, things start to get interesting. You begin to notice synchronicities, coincidences, and opportunities popping up out of nowhere. It's like you're plugged into this invisible source of information, and not only are you connected to it, but you're also starting to influence it. More and more people are starting to create their own paths, and fewer people feel stuck as victims of life. For example, let's say you used to blame traffic for making you angry. That means you're letting external things control how you feel. But when you change your thoughts and feelings, you start to see changes in your life. You realize you're the one creating your reality. As you see positive things happening, you become more confident in your ability to shape your life. Now let's talk about changing your personality. Your personality shapes your reality, and it's made up of your thoughts, actions, and feelings. If you want to change your life, you have to change yourself. It's like a cycle. The same thoughts lead to the same choices, which lead to the same behaviors, experiences, and emotions. To break out of this cycle, you need to become aware of your thoughts, actions, and feelings. This process is called metacognition, which means thinking about your own thinking. It's like shining a light on your subconscious patterns. Once you're aware of them, you can start to change them. This is the first step towards real change. Meditation can help you become more familiar with your thoughts and feelings, so you can start to challenge and change them. When you become conscious of your thoughts and feelings, you're no longer controlled by them. You can see yourself more clearly and make intentional choices about who you want to be. This is a powerful moment of transformation. Imagine reaching a point where you're so aware of your hidden thoughts and habits that you don't slip back into old patterns. It's like asking, how many times do we have to forget before we start remembering? That's the moment when real change happens. Now let's talk about how to shape the life you want and make your thoughts influence your reality. According to quantum physics, when you focus on something, it goes from being a possibility to actually happening. So can you use your thoughts to create new experiences in your life? For a couple of years, we taught workshops around the world, but we didn't see a lot of change. 
That's because real change requires unlearning old habits and learning new ones. It's about rewiring your brain and retraining your body to think and feel differently. I noticed that people who experienced spontaneous healings had a few things in common. First, they believed in something greater than themselves, something spiritual. Second, they realized that their negative emotions had contributed to their problems. For years, they'd been holding on to feelings like anger, guilt, and bitterness, and it was affecting their health. Our bodies and minds are connected, and when we get stuck in negative cycles, it becomes a habit. Changing these habits isn't easy. Most of what we do is automatic, based on years of conditioning. When we try to change, we're fighting against years of ingrained behavior. Even if we try to think positively, our bodies may still be stuck in negative patterns. For example, feeling unworthy while dreaming of success creates a conflict between our mind and body. Negative emotions trigger our body's stress response, making us feel angry or anxious. This reaction is primitive and instinctual, meant to protect us from perceived threats. Some people respond by getting aggressive, while others flee in fear. Either way, it's our body's way of coping with stress. To truly change, we need to recondition our bodies and minds. It's about breaking free from old habits and creating new ones. This isn't just about positive thinking. It's about changing the way we feel and react to the world around us. When people feel fear, anger, or pain, it activates their body's natural response called the sympathetic nervous system. This response is automatic, like a reflex, and usually we don't have much control over it. But it turns out we can actually influence it. The first step is learning to shorten our emotional reactions. For example, if something happens and we get really mad, we might stay upset for hours or even days. But if we keep holding on to that feeling, it can become a mood, a temperament, or even a personality trait. People might hold on to these emotions for years, even though they can't remember the events that triggered them accurately. What's important isn't the details of the event, but learning to overcome the emotion. During meditation, It's normal for feelings like frustration or anger to come up. Instead of giving in to these emotions or distracting ourselves, we can learn to lower their intensity and bring ourselves back to the present moment. Each time we do this, it's a victory, telling our body that we're in control, not our emotions. With enough practice, our body learns to surrender to our will releasing pent-up energy and making us less reactive to external circumstances. This can even boost our immune system's strength, making us more resilient to viruses like SARS-CoV-2. So, by learning to manage our emotions, we not only improve our well-being but also our body's ability to fight off illness. So, here's the deal. When we stop reacting to stuff, that's actually a win. It takes practice, though. How many times do we need to get mad or upset before we decide not to anymore? That's what change is all about. Meditation helps us remember who we want to be and who we don't want to be when we're awake. If we do it right, we start seeing changes in our life. But remember, nothing changes until we do. Now, 
about manifesting things. Ever heard the saying, believe it to see it? Well, that's true. If you don't believe in what you're trying to get, it's not going to happen. So you got to really believe in it deep down. How? Make a statement that says what you want is coming and you deserve it. Say it every day for a while until you really believe it. And don't try too hard. Pushing and controlling too much messes things up. You got to let go and trust that what's meant to be will happen. Also, if you're always stuck in negative thoughts, worrying and overthinking, you're blocking good stuff from coming your way. So try to chill out and focus on the good stuff instead. Here's the deal. If you're not feeling good vibes, it could be blocking the good stuff from coming to you. So focus on the positive things, look for solutions instead of problems, and stop being judgmental or gossiping. Hang out with people who lift you up and do things that make you happy. When you're feeling joyful, good things start happening because the universe picks up on that energy. If you're not attracting what you want, relax. Try these methods to get back on track. Notice when you're feeling off and use one of these tools to get back in sync. Believe that good things are coming your way and they will. Remember, what's inside us reflects on the outside. So make your internal condition a priority. Now let's talk about something called the terror barrier. It's like a big wall that keeps people from reaching freedom. Most people don't get through it because they're scared of the unknown. They don't realize they have the power to choose their thoughts and break free. Imagine this. You have this power flowing into your mind and you can turn it into anything you want. But most people stick to the same old thoughts that match their current situation, even if they don't like it. They're stuck in a mental prison, but there are no locks on the door. They can leave anytime. Now, sometimes a new idea pops into their head, something different they could do, a why type idea. But unless they get emotionally involved and take action, nothing changes. Our central nervous system is incredibly powerful, and when we tap into it, amazing things can happen. Let's break this down. When you take an idea from just thinking about it to really feeling it in your mind, things get intense. Your body shifts into a different vibe, not the usual one you're comfy with. Even if you're not happy with the results, you're used to it. Suddenly, doubt creeps in, then fear and that fear shows up as anxiety. It's like hitting a wall, the barrier and bouncing right back to where you were before because it's familiar and safe even if it's not great but here's the thing if your goals don't scare and excite you at the same time you're probably not aiming high enough your old way of thinking will try to pull you back but you've got to push through trust me once you break through that barrier things start looking up ever had buyers remorse it's when you back out of something big right before taking the leap. That's the terror barrier at work. But if you don't learn to bust through it, you'll stay stuck in the same old spot forever. Scary, right? Joseph Campbell nailed it. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. What you believe about yourself matters most. External praise feels good, but it's temporary. Real self-love comes from within. You've got to cheer for yourself every day. So how do you actually do it? 
Start by believing in yourself. Lack of belief is a major issue in the world. If you can overcome that, you can achieve anything. Let's simplify this. When you meet someone and boost their confidence for a bit, but they still don't believe in themselves, they go back to their old ways. So you've got to work on building your belief in yourself every day. A big part of that is how you talk to yourself. What do you say when you look in the mirror? A lot of times we say mean stuff to ourselves, stuff we wouldn't even say to our enemies. It's tough, but I think it's important to be your own critic sometimes. The problem is we're not tough on ourselves because we don't love ourselves enough. It's a balance. Most people are struggling, even if they make their life look great on social media. The people judging you are probably not happy themselves. So how do we change it? We need more self-love. You've got to remind yourself why you're awesome, what you're proud of, and what you're grateful for every day. When you love yourself more, you can push yourself harder without feeling like a failure if things don't work out. It's like Jay-Z. He doesn't need to show off because he's so confident. When I go to events, I feel great and I don't need to brag. I can ask people where I can improve because I'm confident in myself. Here are some practical tips. Listen to uplifting music in the morning, dance around a bit, even if it's just bobbing your head. Every morning I start by listening to music that makes me feel good. It helps me switch from feeling tired and unsure about the day to feeling pumped up and ready to go. Then I take my dogs out for a walk, what I call a believe walk. This walk is super important to me. I spend at least 20 minutes, but sometimes up to an hour just walking and thinking. I even carry some weight on my back to make it a bit tougher. Along the way, I stop at a coffee shop, which costs a couple of bucks. But you know what? It's worth it. This walk helps me focus on what I want to achieve for the day and how I can help others. It's like a little celebration of what's to come. See, most mornings, we wake up feeling rushed and start checking our phones right away seeing all the messages and emails from other people telling us what to do. But that's not how I roll. I protect my mornings and don't schedule anything until at least 10.30. This gives me time to do what I want, like my Believe Walk. For me, it's like a form of meditation, but instead of sitting still, I'm moving. I find it helps me think clearer and come up with new ideas. So here's my advice. Listen to inspiring music every morning and take a 20-minute Believe Walk to plan your day and focus on what really matters, how you feel about yourself. Stop relying on others to make you feel worthy and start believing in yourself. When you do, amazing things will happen.